Hey everyone, it's Joan Isaias here from The Automator. And in this video, you're gonna learn some really cool advanced stuff. We were on a team call with Irfan and Rizwan and Isaias was um, teaching this really great concept and we recorded it, it was really awesome. And then we re realized we shared the wrong screen. So the recording had to <laughs> get redone. So we're, we're doing this a second time and we're gonna demo here some really great concepts to learn about creating GUIs. And Isaias had some really, really interesting ways of doing this. So why don't you go ahead and start explaining it, Isaias. Right. So this is something I don't even know how uh, how that I realized that this was possible. But what happened was I needed to create this exact same GUI for my Rahaki toolkit. And it was about the preferences. And now I needed to switch between different preferences. Now, I think as soon as I started, so I started creating the preferences. So for the general preferences, I started with this thing, then this, this, and that, and I finished it. And now when I went to the next one, then I realized, oh shoot, I have to hide everything from this one. And now I have to show everything from that one. And then I want to do all that against this and that. And then I, I was thinking, and I don't know, well, uh, that I was coded by myself. I was like, in, a, in addition, you want to have the apply button. Right. Yes. Right? Like right, so yeah. So okay. every time you run into this, now you need the apply button for this right. one and the close this one for that one. So at some point I realized, hold on, I, I, I didn't even know the concept at the time. There was this concept of having a child window and a parent window. So it was there. I just realized that and I redid my preferences GUI. What did I do? Well, I created a little window that it only contains all of these things. And then I kept these three buttons out of that window. These three buttons are uh, the same for all the preferences. So they are common to all of them. So they are outside of this little window. And then for each of them, now I just hide and show the window that I want to display. And this part up here is the only thing on my main window that changes. So that's basically what, what I was telling um, Irfan at that time, that you guys were talking about a, a, a wizard and so on. And at some point, I thought that he was kind of like going toward creating each of the controls and then having a different, I don't know what he was trying to do. And I, I, and I saw myself in him because I went through that same path. And I was like, no, I think there's a better way. So this, what I said to you guys to try to explain it and then that other video was, hey, you have to divide or split your script in two parts. This here, right here, that's a little window. And that's the key point now. Now, all of the windows that you have for the other options, right, they must be the same size, right? <laughs> if you don't want to have the headache of having to redraw your window in different sizes. So, and it would be very annoying if every time you click the window change sizes. So having the biggest size first is a must. You get the biggest size here, and from here, you start adding the um, controls on that one. Then you create a different window for each of them that is the same size. Yeah. And then you map spacing in there. One, when you explained this before, the way I stored it, made, made sense of it, was um, in web pages, I would think of it as like an iframe on your web page, right? And that yes. part, you make a box, and now in that box, I can put whatever I want. Now, granted, right. they have to be the similar size, right? Like, right. you don't want to be zooming in and out of the things and having small font. Right. And font. So you got to decide on that standard size. But it, it really made a lot of sense to me. Now, let's also, before we show, let's let's go to the V1 version of Automate My Task and show where how we were applying this, because... The V1 oh, right. version. Or why we, we started with that, yes. Yeah, because the V1 so, version um, is a crazy complicated GUI with right. so much going on. And, and right. there's a flow you need to do in this, but it's hard to follow because, you know, things got added to this thing at different times, right? Right. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's so. really interesting because the first thing you have to do is capture something, but the capture right. is done. Right. So this is the first thing you have to do, but it's at the bottom of the screen. And then later on, you decide whether you want to lock it to a window or you want to do some other thing. So yeah, it is. So so to your point, there was a flow. It's just that all of it is in one place, mess. not yeah. following a, a given order. 
So what we try to do, and this is what you asked for, is, hey, why don't we just show one part? Let's just show about capturing. That's the first step. In reality, that there, the bottom left is one, and the second, the one to the right is a different option. So you have oh, to decide: yeah. are you gonna are you gonna do a mouse click or are you gonna do a keyboard? You know, um, oh, you see. Text, right <laughs> there. You go. Um, both <laughs> of them, you capture a picture. But now let's right. go show on the V two version because Irfan was laying it out. Now it doesn't. The GUI works, but the tool doesn't work. But we're working on right, it. Right, right. This is the one that we have. So now. Right. The first step now is capturing. And now you have to decide whether it's a mouse or a keyboard on it, right? Right. But that's the only thing that is there. And you will focus on just capturing the right image, having the right size. That's it. Right. It's only then you're going to click next whenever you're ready. And now you're going to get some other options. Well, now, is it the next click or the middle click I want to do? I think he has this done. Go back and change it to keyboard. Um, and let's see if that. Opens up to a yeah, different. Yeah, now that so, looks so different. Right. See how much simpler that is of like a flow, because like it's it's going to be so much easier to follow to know what to do. Right. So now that I have this, by the way, I would have the color threshold here in here because it, sure. it has to be big, well, right? And it will figure that out. Yeah. Right. Now, when I go to the next now, I get the last part, which is about filtering in which window this is going to be locked to a given window, just a window class or a screen area, whatever. It's kind of like filtering out and locking it's, the search yeah. location and so on, right? Right. But now notice that he didn't have to recreate the back and next button every single time. Those are not independent windows from one another. They are basically, and in, in, in here you can see the difference because I think he decided to keep this one grayed and then the parent window, he made it white so that you could see the difference between the two. But when you have the same color between the two, you don't notice the difference. Those two have the exact same color. And for that reason, you don't notice where one starts and where the other one ends. Now, going back to, the, to this image here, that's exactly what I was going to kind of like explain you have to you have the main parent window which is the blue one right and then you have the child window this concept is something that you know once you learn it it is such an eye opener like you can make windows behave as they are locked to the parent window because that's the other thing once you make a child window locked to the parent yeah. Now you don't have to care if one moves because as soon as the parent moves, the child moves with it. So yeah, you don't we, have to worry about those kind of things. Anymore. One of those things we talked about for a different video was doing the the parent and child window versus the tool window also and explaining the, the how they relate to each other, right? The, the pros and cons of each one. But yeah. Right. Now here, the only thing that you have to keep in mind is if we hadn't done this, Every time you click one of these options, you would have to hide all the controls and show a totally different group of controls. And that would make it a little bit slow, especially when you have 50 controls or 100 controls, for example. But if you make it a window that you show and hide, it's so fast, you don't even notice. Like, like whenever I'm doing it, you don't see when the change happens. It's just... It's just very simple to plug. So and this also, is a and, and can you leave that up? Hold on. The the other oh, sorry, yeah. interesting point in that ours, as I was mentioning, there is a very specific flow and order of things in Automate My Task. In your right. tool, you don't have that, right? You want to let people jump around. And that's where the list view on the left is brilliant because it makes it very easy to jump to the one you want, right? You don't have to go through right. a certain order. Right. In our case... And we just grabbed the same concept of having child parent windows, but now applied it to kind of the concept of a wizard, in which now we right. limit the steps and we go in a given order. And there's no way that you can um, jump a step or you know do any changes to the oh. order in the in which you have to do perform the steps. Is this we've both been on web pages where there's like 80 questions and you you fill it out, or you think you fill it out, and you hit submit, and it says Hey, something's not selected, but it doesn't tell you what, right? And then you're like, well, what? what's not selected? I don't even know. It takes forever to find it. 
right? Right. That's what we're this our wizard type approach. Now right. you have three things to go evaluate, or five things, not fifty things, like in our our main yes. my task would be one version. So yeah. So at this point, I think I hope this helps. Just know about this concept. If you go to the other hotkey documentation, if you look for parent, um, if you just look for the word parent, I think you might find the documentation that talks about specifically that. And um, when said on oh, we object, so it's a child to... window because like, that I, I know the um the that, problem that's... is that the way how you add it is with you 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 don't mention the word child, you mention the word parent. Okay. So you have to use the word parent and what the handle of the parent is. It's a weird, it's a weird concept. I will link to it later. Let me see window. Oh, there it is. That's the one. So basically, as I mentioned, you have to use the word parent, but then you have to specify some other things. So take a read on that. It just it takes a little while to get it right because even when I started with it, it just it's not as simple as you might think at first. Like you have to follow very specific um, access. And as it says, there are some very specific exceptions to the rule. So read the manual, make sure and test it out. Just use a little bit of a small script to test it out. And then, yeah, create very amazing stuff with it. <laughs> yeah, and if you're completely new to GUIs, we have a great intro to GUIs course. We don't cover this, obviously. This is a more <laughs> advanced topic, but right. you go through all the controls in creating GUIs. So you have a specific example for drop downs and buttons and you know um, all these things. So Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, our our courses do come with a 200% money back guarantee. Make sure you subscribe. We're, we have over 10,000 subscribers now. Be one of those 10,000 and don't miss out on the good yeah. videos. Have a great day. Cheers. Bye, guys.